Hi, my name is Chris Ryan. Do you struggle striking your iron clubs from the fairway? Many golfers do. Well, in today's video, we're talking about that strike. We're talking about the role that the trail wrist plays at impact. And we're gonna show you a really simple drill that you can do next time you practice to improve this. So welcome back to another Your Friday. This is where you can get involved with the channel and have your question or your topic answered. So let me know in the comments box if it's a topic you'd like me to discuss, if it's a question you'd like me to answer, or maybe it's just a swing fault that you're currently struggling with. As I say, let me know in the comments box and I will hopefully get a video to help you. You can also get in touch with me via Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. So use those and let me know of your swing fault. So today we are addressing or answering a question which came in from YouTube via Albany FX, who was talking all about the right wrist at impact. He was discussing or was asking the question about how much bend there should be in that wrist when we make contact with the golf ball. He explained that he felt that he had almost a flat right wrist when he made contact with the ball, and he felt that was giving him a few issues. We have got Trapman. Trapman is gonna help us in this video because we're gonna use it to track some data down at impact, which is going to relate to that right wrist. I have got in my hands here, I've got a seven iron. Now I currently use the TaylorMade P770 seven iron. This has got 33 degrees of loft. I believe it's 33, so that's 33 degrees of loft. So that's what TaylorMade have built into that golf club. Now I'm just gonna very simply hit my standard seven iron shot. And I want you to, before I hit this shot, just have a think about how much loft you think that golf club is going to have at impact. We call it dynamic loft. So it's basically saying, well, if that club has got 33 here, do I de-loft it or do I increase the loft or do I present about that 33 degrees? So have a little, have a little think. Maybe even pop it in the comments box down below, pause the video, pop your question, pop your answer, I should say, in there. How much loft do you think my golf club has got at impact? Let's hit one and find out. So Trapman is going to give us this. Trapman calls this dynamic loft. So let's go ahead and just hit this, uh, this seven iron. So that felt pretty good. Uh, that's gone a little bit left of my target, but, uh, but not too much there. So the loft on my golf club at impact was 18.2 degrees. So my golf club, which had 33 statically, was de-lofted down to 18 degrees. Now, for many golfers, when we talk about dynamic loft, that's a much, much lower number than they would expect it to be. Um, you know, maybe a lot of golfers are aware that having the handle forwards is going to be something that we'd like to work towards, but my handle must have been significantly forward of that golf club head to de-loft that club right the way down to 18.2. Now, there are a number of factors which contribute toward dynamic loft. It's not just very simply where the handle is, but that is a huge factor. So we can say there, without even looking at the golf sink, pretty safely, that when my golf club is in this vertical condition, it's got 33 degrees of static loft. When I made contact with the golf ball, I had the handle forwards. Now, if you look at my trail wrist, my right wrist, as I push that handle forwards, I have to increase the amount of bend in that wrist. So if I had the handle back behind, that would take my wrist into a more flatter condition. The handle forwards would take it more into this bent condition. So if I'm to deliver my golf clubs as I want them to into the golf ball, with the handle forwards, with the dynamic loft reduced, with the divot after the ball, all those kind of things that we strive for in our iron shots, I really need my right wrist to be bent at impact. Now, it's important to say at this stage that 18.2 degrees is not the number we're all looking for. It does depend a little bit on yourself, your speed. If you've got less speed in your golf swing, you probably need your dynamic loft to be a little bit higher, maybe above the 20. So there isn't a one size fits all. I certainly wouldn't want mine any lower than that because at the moment my ball flight is maybe tending to, to err on the lower side. But 18.2 degrees doesn't give me a ridiculously low flight as many people would sort of think it would. So here's a little drill that you can do in practice. And I want you to make sure you hit these balls no more than about 30 to 40 yards through the air initially. We're going to try and create an impact where we have the right wrist bent, as we've just explained. But I want you to feel like you maintain that bend right the way through to this end position here. You can see that my right wrist is still very, very bent. If I'm able to do that over this distance of sort of 30, 40 yards, I should be able to take my seven iron and hit it 
very, very low, somewhere in that kind of region of, uh, you know, head height, maybe even slightly lower than that. So let's have a go. So I'm not going to adjust my setup. I'm going to take my setup as normal. I'm just going to hit a little 30, 40 yard shot, trying to keep that right wrist bent. Okay, so you can see how if I open up my right hand, I was able to maintain the bend in that right wrist, which is exactly what I was trying to do. So effectively, I tried to create that at impact and just take that through to the follow through position. Dynamic loft on that particular shot was 15.3 degrees. So I managed to get my handle even further forward, which is absolutely fine because I was trying to do this as a little bit of an exaggerated movement. So I really reduced that loft pretty much half of it. So 33 down to 15. Now, what you might find if you're the golfer who, you know, maybe doesn't hit your irons as well as you'd like, you don't really get that kind of compressed feeling. You often don't hit it as far as your playing partners. You may well find that when you perform this little exercise, you find it incredibly difficult to do that. You'll notice there that that finished position, my right wrist has gone to a very, very different condition. It's almost gone the opposite way. I've added some sort of this movement to it as opposed to keeping the bend back on it. That one there, you can see the diamond loft on that particular shot, 31 degrees. So that was me presenting pretty much a vertical club shaft with the stated loft on the golf club. This is not how we need to hit the iron clubs. And you know, for many of the golfers I see who are newer to the game, it's a little bit of a concept because that's often what they believe they should be doing. They should be starting with the club in this vertical condition and returning it to this vertical condition. That will result in weaker shots, higher shots, no divots, you're gonna struggle from the rough. You're often gonna find that you prefer it teed up maybe on the par threes. So these are all the good indications that you maybe need to have your handle a little bit more forwards. So today's lesson is all about understanding that when you hit the golf ball, you need some bend in that right wrist. And the great way to get that feeling is to try and hit shots over a very short distance, trying to hold this finished position. Notice I'm holding it for a good four or five seconds. I really want to be aware of where I am. Can I create that position? If I can, fantastic, we can start to scale that up a little bit. Just bear in mind, we're not looking to hit full shots this way. There is no way I'll be able to swing at full speed and maintain the bend in that right wrist. We would find that at impact it's bent, but after that it would start to release into a full follow through position. So let's make sure we're hitting these shots over, as I say, that 30 or 40 yard distance. So thank you very much for the question via YouTube. Hopefully that's helpful to yourself and some of you who are watching. Impact with the eyes is something that many golfers need to work on. It often makes the game easier, but it's the enjoyment as well. If we can start to strike those eyes from the fairways, the enjoyment goes up. And often that's what we're after when we play this golf, this game as a hobby. We're just looking to go out there, enjoy the game, and hopefully this little exercise will help you do that a little bit more. As always, usual stuff is down below the video. That's a comments box, there's a like button. There's also a link to subscribe to the channel. So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click that link. It'll just send you a notification each time I post a video. And there are now four videos going up each and every week. That's a Monday, a Wednesday, a Friday, and my new video series on a Saturday. Thank you again for watching, and hopefully we'll see you back here again soon.